Greetings, beautiful souls. How are you doing on your journey of transformation for, from three-dimensional survival human being evolving into a fifth-dimensional super conscious extraterrestrial being living in the human body? I know it's a lot. And we're coming into the full moon energy, which is on the Monday, May 16. And there is the lunar eclipse. There is the Mercury retrograde. Oh, God help us all, right? And we're also coming to the plane in alignment that starts on the May 15. So let's look at it and let's how to work with these energies. So I um, believe that everybody who is invested in this transformation is doing great. You may have your ups and downs because we all have them. We are on this human journey of remembering our greatness and our extraterrestrial consciousness, creating this superhuman consciousness within us, literally helping to evolve this body so the other bodies can learn from us or help you know all those who are going to have a children and so much on to be in this higher dimensional cellular vibrational body giving birth to this amazing uh, star beings who are coming here on the earth to help to create um, a wonderful place here for all of us but it all starts with you so let's focus on you you are this amazing light being living in the human body who had uh, excitement, right? Coming to this journey before you start that. So now we are in this time of the um, heaviness of the energy. Many of you jump into the dark night of the soul. It seems that the chaotic energy is, is very active right now. There's a lot going on for all of us, for every single one of us. Uh, just because I'm sitting here with a smiling face doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to me as well. It applies to every single one of us of this. You know, one day is this way. It's like five minutes is this way, five minutes is that way. In my class, I was describing it to my students. It's like being in the chaotic energy. It's like walking through the minefield and the bombs are exploding all beside you. Yet you know that if you walk nice and forward and follow your guidance and intuition, you get to the other side absolutely unharmed. Now, this is the, um, it's the law that says that every great change first start with the chaos, is preceded with chaos, right? And that is the same coming, happening to us. We are creating a quantum jump, a quantum speed, coming or re recoding the human body, the three-dimensional body into a fifth-dimensional evolutionary body, which means that you can heal, you can rejuvenate, you can create a new life patterns. You can do a lot of kind of the things that you wanted to do. You enhance your uh, sensory perspective of the body, activating your extra um, sensory abilities and so much on. I mean, it is and it will be much more fun than it is right now. But to do that, you have to throw yourself in the chaos. And it seems that we have been in the chaos for a while. But now it increases. When it increases, you need to find the empowerment in it. You cannot just go like, oh, God, this is too heavy. I'm going to go cry in the corner, been dead and that, right? You need to say, okay, how do I find the empowerment in it? How do I calm myself down and how I will um, go nice and steady? The feeling safe and secure, feeling neutral will activate that guidance to go nice and steady, will activate your alien compass that I speak about in the pleading code tree. It will help you to guide you that you will not get necessary harm by all those bombs. Maybe you get a little scratch here and there, but nothing horrible is going to happen to you. Now, if you look at it, that everything bad, chaotic, dark, whichever way you want to call it, is going to help us to uh, in this transformation. Is there as an empowerment instead of as we like to look at it of the suffering? It's going to have a totally different meaning for you. If the bad things happen to me for the reason 
that I will create a better future, I may start looking at it, what I would call a bad things or things I don't want to deal with, things I normally, you know, kind of like just put up there or get angry about. If I look at them and says, okay, if that would not happen, I would not make this change and this change because we all like to have some level of the safety and security, even if it's dysfunctional safety and security. There's something right at the coded within us for the survival that we will take that dysfunctional safety and security um, for the sake of survival. And none of us likes to make these conscious changes if it means to completely undo our safety and security what we have it's like if somebody tells you okay you you can build you can live in a new house but you have to completely destroy your house you go like are you crazy why would i do that like you know i have this this and that and we all have that explanation to it so let's start looking at it that everything bad will happen to you is for a good reason everything chaotic you know when your family goes this way and this way that way it's for you to learn to be nice and study and the nurture and learning to deal with a life situation as ancient would you were an ancient sage you were a wise one whenever you were female or a male and you have to deal with much more worse things than you are dealing today and you have to do it with your calmness, with your centeredness, with being neutral and feeling safe and find the right guidance, either in doing or not doing, whatever would be the most appropriate at a time. And you did all of this with a love in your heart. So if we know that, we're gonna go back in those last two weeks, what we talk about, falling in love with human that you are. How are you doing with that? Are you doing a little things that make you uh, appreciate yourself? Walking bare feet in the grass, making yourself your favorite food, honoring your body, uh, dancing to your favorite song, uh, playing your favorite instruments, going to places that you enjoy, reconnecting with the people that you are missing and love, whatever it is that help you to fall in love with your human experience, it's very important to do it. And the next step is to say, okay, if I love myself, I accept myself for who I am with all my imperfections and so much on, because you know what? We all have those things that we don't love about ourselves, about our maybe personality, what we have done, that I have a look or anything that there is. We all have something on our list. So once you accept it and you fall in love with yourself, you will start making the list of who you are. What is that old self of yourself that you are ready to let go? And what is the new self that you would like to be? If today I have a magic wand and I can move it out for you and you can become this most amazing new self, who are you going to be? This is an interesting question. I ask a few of my clients in a session when we are setting the new patterns and I say, well, who is your new self? And uh, they sat there and they said, I don't know. And each one of them had a list of what happened and who is, who pardoned you this way and what happened in the past and what is the family and what is the past lives. And, you know, we can sit here for hours, days, maybe the years to solve that. And, you know, we did a pretty good job of that. And then I says, well, who is your new self? If you wake up tomorrow morning and your new self, who are you? How does your life look like? They didn't know. So if I am evolving from the three-dimensional survival program being into a fifth dimensional evolutionary being, who am I? What is my personality? What does my life look like? What is that I do? I do love that I enjoy because I still going to be in the human body. At least that's the goal uh, because that's where you are created. That's from where you are creating. So let's start to make a list. For example, my list is uh, 
living uh, from the heart, living by the six heart virtue, as the wing makers talk about, wingmakers.org. Um, and there's a lovely PDF file about it. The living from compassion, understanding, forgiveness, acceptance, love, and bravery. All those six virtues, you literally bring your mind consciousness, your bodily consciousness, your soul consciousness in your heart. That's what it created beautiful, a compass, alien compass, as I talk about in the plating code tree. And if I embrace my six hard virtues, it changed me, it will change environment around me. And if I come to the conflict or the situation or something, you know, the chaotic that I need to deal with, I may stick to the six hard virtue and says, okay, how I will um, find my argument true, uh, truth, um, the way that I need to express myself from the six hard virtues that will, you know, hold me away from my judgments and need to be right, need to correct, need to control kind of the things, which would be in my old pattern. I mean, we all are humans and we all have our patterns that are not necessarily most beautiful and brilliant. We all have them. What else is up there? If I live in by my six virtues, what is that I like? What is it like to dress in? Do I like to embrace my feminine divine within or my masculine divine within? Or do I like to merge them all? And it doesn't matter on the gender that who you are. You feel, you know, go to your original self. Go to that one, two-year-old self when you were and meditate with it. What was that original energy, energy imprint that you came to this world? Then go back all the way into the past. What is your original energy? What is it that you like from it that you would like to bring into the 21st century? Do you like to play instrument? Um, well, again, what kind of the food do you like? That all may change and vary, but you need to get yourself some structure. What is kind of the work I like to do? And, you know, if you don't have to work, how am I in a service to humanity? We all have to have some life passion and purpose because if you don't have that, you are like sitting in the still water that will eventually smell and they'll be uh, attracting all kind of the parasites. It's not good for you. So it's good to have some kind of the mission. Your life mission may be to go and feed the birds every day. It honestly doesn't have to be the most uh, something that you will say like, you know, my life mission is to invent the oxygen for the, for the earth. We're not maybe capable all of to do that. I definitely not there, but it may be ever. What I want to say, everything is important. Even to feeding the bird, it's important part of this life experience that we have. So it doesn't matter how in our kind of the thinking, it may be little and insignificant or huge and significant. Really, who judge this significance? It's not even the hard virtue, right? How do we choose the acceptance? Accept that what is my passion is my life calling and that it is my mission. That is something that makes me wake up in the morning every day and said, thank you. I am so grateful to be alive. I am so grateful to be in this body. And uh, um, especially when you are going through these dark days, because there's definitely going to be like, oh, you are thrown into the washer and then, you know, you're going through that uh, rinsing and the spinning cycle and you come out like, oh God, how I'm going to do this? And then he throw you into the dryer and you go like, oh my God, too hot, too cold, too wet, too this, too that. It's not pleasant. So you need to find those things that are pleasant in the morning. And if you don't, then fake it. I mean, let's show our soul family that our human experience, uh, we accept it and it can be fun. It can be so much on. Then you wake up and says, thank you. I'm so grateful to be alive. I cannot wait what I can create for my soul family in this day. And again, whatever it is, enjoy this time here. Human body is such a gift. It is a fine instrument that we are learning to tune and that we are learning to work with. Now, very quick last thing. So the Palladian attunement, uh, Palladian alignment goes from the May 15 to the May 23rd. It's the earth 
sun and the Pleiades align in the same planetary you know, line. That means that we are receiving lots of Pleiadian energy with your soul, beautiful essence of yourself. Sun is a masculine energy. So the sun energy would stimulate your mind ego energy, which is phenomenal. And of course, the earth energy would represent your body and yourself. Plus, earth is receiving lots of beneficial energy. But let's focus on you. This is the time to start recoding your body. Wake up in the morning before sunrise. Uh, if you are not an early riser, I'm not really crazy about it, but I do try to wake up. Around the six o'clock in the morning, we have a sunrise about 6.30 up here. And at least for the 10 minutes before the sunrise, to breathe that energy in and out through all the skin of your body inside and energize yourself. And when you feel that moment when the sun kind of like hit the horizon, even though I cannot see it from my backyard, there's that feeling that comes to that goes as like surge of the energy. And you will remember the search of the energy from the past lives, from the ancient times, when you used to do this kind of practice, built up on it, that's going to help you to connect to your ancient self. Then the Pleiadian energy and the sun mind energy. So start programming yourself. Who is your new self? So I'm living out of the six hard virtue, for example. Again, understanding, compassion, acceptance, uh, forgiveness love and the bravery if i want to program that inside i have to use a love energy that moment when you feel in love when you are one with the other person or maybe your love is with the children or your animals or the nature or the earth or the aliens doesn't matter whatever it is that um, is the definition for you but that love that makes you really feel like you can do anything that you can touch the stars and bring them down to the earth that kind of the feeling you need to stimulate in your reprogramming your fifth dimensional higher consciousness it's connected to that kind of the energy it responds to that kind of the energy so we are reprogramming from the fear to that higher love consciousness in the body. Now, let's say that you want to be a um, talented writer. You want to be a singer. You want to be a good teacher. You want to be a great baker. Anything, you know, a good, a talented uh, computer programmer. Bring it all in, set the program inside. I mean, we need all of that. We need every single occupation. But remember, you have to code it with the unconditional love. It's like you are so in love and you have to bring it all in and create a happiness within the body with it. Now, I totally get it that it's challenging. Because the things, again, you know, I'm telling you, you are walking through the minefield. The bombs are exploding left to the right. And I'm telling you, okay, sweetie, here you are. Feel like you are madly in love and that you are happy as well. And this is how you're going to go forward through. That's exactly how it is. Now, nobody says that is ancient uh, mystery school initiations had all of that logic and have been easy. But at least you have that feeling of love, okay? So hold on that. Uh, if you need to stimulate it because it is not in your life, watch the romantic movies, uh, read to romances and so much on, all with a happy ending. Don't end up with this like, oh my God, I may never seen each other again or they die. Leave those ones alone, okay? Create a happy ending to any love story that you may know or remember. Rewrite the stories that you knew and create a new one because all this new energy is about love. Pleiadian seems to be the matchmakers lately, lately because it's very, very interesting the energy that I'm receiving and the information I'm receiving from them. Um, so let's play with that. So you have a, a wonderful next two weeks. Get through this yucky energy of the chaos and things and unhappiness and take it as like, thank you. Thank you, universe. Thank you, earth. How can I you how I'm gonna turn this in my empowerment? If I have to settle down something in my family, how I'm gonna use it as a 
lesson to communicate clearly without um, my frustrations about it. That is the nice way to put it. Play with it. You are becoming master. You are becoming sage. You are becoming a wise one. You are an ancient one walking in this human body. So let's make this experience beautiful and exciting, enjoyable together. So maybe Bello, you can give me a little few comments, how it is that you are doing um, and how, what kind of the energy you are using to get yourself in that feeling of the unconditional love and the happiness. What is your new self, if you would like to share that? I love you all and I'll see you soon. Love and light from my heart to yours.